Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about Lightroom 8 updates. Hi folks, it's a big update today, Lightroom 8. Except it's not really, it's more like Lightroom 7.6. Um, the reason for this is that Adobe Max is on and Adobe are basically just gonna start naming f new versions every year. So uh, because there's no real big updates happening, everything's happening constantly. Like with Lightroom 7, we've had um, the AI auto update, we've had custom books, we've had, uh, what else have we had? Over oh, the new profiles, stuff like that. So a lot has happened. Uh, so that for that reason, they're just gonna be updating the numbers every year and we'll be getting a constant update. So they're like 8.1 is gonna come out and there'll be new stuff in that as well, which is great. It means we're constantly getting access to new features all the time. Now it doesn't feel as exciting in some ways, but you're not paying any extra for it. You're just paying your subscription and that's it and you get it. So it's well worth it. So let's talk about some of these features. So the first one is related to Apple's HEIC files, which are the ones that contain depth information. So you do need to have your high efficiency turned on and you need to have your depth uh, information turned on as well in the camera. So here is a shot from Laura Shu. Laura was kind enough to give me this because I don't have access to a plus or I haven't had it in the last couple of days. Um, I've just been very, very busy and there's been some personal stuff going on that I've mentioned on Twitter. So this image has that information put in. So the way we're gonna see it is by putting in a mask of some kind because it's based on using a mask. So I'm just gonna drag down here with graduated filter Okay, so if I click on O, we can see that there's a mask covering everything. So we come down to range mask, where we're used to seeing color and luminance. We now have depth. So by turning this on, we're able to get access to depth. So the range is basically from front to back inside as a distance. And um, smooth this is just to control over the edge. So I can pull it back here. Now it's gonna do nothing for a second, but I can turn on show depth mask. So that shows where the depth information is. So as I pull back, we can see those areas uh, that are white are starting to go out. So stuff in the back there is inside the mask. So that's the depth information. So about there, uh, we're seeing what's going on. And by looking at the edges here and using smoothness, you're basically refining how tight the edge is. So that's probably is done as well with information in it. So I'm just gonna turn off the depth mask and I'm actually gonna apply some sharpness or lack of sharpness that allows me to blur it. Uh, to give this kind of a lens effect. Now, see the way it's kind of a little bit furry there? So I probably need to increase the smoothness to try and get that off. So you're just trying to get that balance. Now, it's not going to be perfect, but it's pretty good. And it's the same kind of thing that they're using for 3D photos now. Okay, so that is a quick look at depth mask. So now we're going to talk about tethering. So Canon Tether got a massive update. And uh, so I'm actually just going to go have a quick look. So we can see here that we now have Tether caption for Canon and Tether caption for Nikon and other. So I do have a Canon camera just here with me. It's an old 40D with a bust shutter button, but it will shoot from tethered. So I'm gonna go start tethered capture and it's bringing this up. It looks like a standard dialogue that we've seen for ages. But down here, we have two other options. Disable auto advance, which stops it jumping to the next image when we shoot. And then we can save a copy to camera, which writes to the card as well as writing to the computer. I'm just gonna leave that off for a second there. I'm gonna leave both of them off, in fact. I'm gonna click OK to show you some of the new features that come up. Now, the idea is that it's much faster. This is some stuff I've just been messing shooting. And uh, so just see the camera, if the camera hasn't gone to sleep, that is. Wiki wiki. <laughs> of course, this has worked perfectly every time, but now that I'm actually recording, there we go. So the 40D is there. And the lens I have it on is allow a 15 mil macro shift lens and it's not the sharpest lens in the world and I bought it and I've never used it. Um, I should have sent it back as well, it should have happened. Now, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna literally show this to you. You know, you're used to this. You take a picture and it just comes in. So we've seen how long it's gonna take us writing to the card and now it should be coming in any second now. And because we haven't disabled auto advance, it jumps to that image, all right? So, and my hand is flailing about wildly with my cuts from taking tiles down earlier today. So now we can actually come in here and we can change the settings here in Lightroom. So I can say, put the shutter speed down to 50 and then drop the ISO and take the shot. 
So we'll have the same exposure, but we'll have less noise. We can set up the white balance as auto as well. So we could also change the white balance if we wanted. So we could put it on daylight, for example, here. I'm just going to stick it to daylight for a second and take a shot with that. So these are just sending across JPEGs because that's all the camera is set to at the moment. Um, if I set it to RAW, they would come across as RAW. And I'm not doing that for the sake of speed, that just happens to be what the camera is set to. Okay, so that, you can change all of that stuff there, and obviously you've got your develop settings, save as previous, and all of that kind of stuff. All right, so that is Canon Tether. Now also in Canon Tether, you've got two new cameras added, which is the EOS 2000D, also known as the Rebel T7, and the EOS M50. Uh, speaking of things that have been added as well, there's also camera support for RAW for the EOS OR, and of course, being a Fuji X photographer, I'm delighted that the X-T3 is now supported. Nikon have the Z7, as well as like the Coolpix P1000, which is a preliminary support. And Panasonic have the LX100 Mark II supported as well in their Lumix range. There are other things that are supported, um, but you just need to go to the Adobe website to see that as well. So those are some of the cool things that are supported for that at the moment. Uh, other things to talk about are uh, HDR panels. So HDR, oh, yeah, perhaps I spell that right, HDR pan. Nope, too much in there. Panel merge, here we go down the bottom. Okay. So I'm actually gonna turn off the tether there as well. We can see we have some images, press G for a grid. So we've got a selection of 12 images. What they are is they are HDRs, four HDRs, and basically just shifting the camera across. These are actually handheld. Right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select all of these, and then photo, I'm gonna go to photo merge, and I'm gonna to go to this new one, which is HDR panorama. So I'm gonna select that, and we're gonna come up here, and we've got the auto settings, so it'll do an auto, and um, create stacks, so it'll stack them all together, and um, you get a little bit of warning to let you know that these are merged with a line image on and the ghost off. All right, that's fine in this case here. And um, to merge with different settings, merge the HDR brackets individually before merging the resulting HDR DNGs to a panorama. So it's telling you the order to do them as well. But this is doing all of these together. Um, so what we're going to do is we'll see this just, you know, select the projection. We're going to leave it on spherical, which will be fine for this. Uh, so here we go, and we have the final thing. So I'm just going to very, very quickly come in here, and I'm going to grab the boundary warp. And I'm going to turn it up the whole way. Uh, so that will do it. So I click Merge, and that will then just go in and create the merge. So as you can see, it's now stacked. and jump into develop and we can actually see what's going on with it inside of develop so we can see that it's an, a nice job of doing the panel and the HDR at the same time so like I said this was handheld so another feature that's there as well is got this new process version so we can now update the process version 5 and basically what that's doing is it's just bringing a little bit of enhancement into the uh, clarity and so the idea is that it doesn't look like a big whitewash and it's helping with purple noise when you're doing stuff with higher ISO when you add this. Uh, and sometimes you get some kind of yellowing and it gets rid of some of that yellowing. Um, so if I go to settings, process version 4. Now it's not particularly visible in this image but there are other images where it's a lot more visible. But that's basically, you've got a new process version. But there is no need to change the process version 5 unless you come across an image that specifically needs it. New images that are brought in will be with process version 5, though. Um, it's, not, it's, not, it's not massive. So that is the bulk of what's going on with it. Uh, there are only small changes. Interesting ones, I like the fact that you now have the HDR panel merge. That's actually really, really cool, done in one step. And then the fact that you go back and you can have it stack as well, so that's great. So you're literally hiding all of those files and just seeing the final image, which is always good when you're looking through a folder of images for a specific image. Uh, some things to note though as well, and this has been mentioned before now, is that there is support for Mojave if you're on a Mac, but of course you now have it dropped. So you have basically El Capitan, is gone and for Windows 8.1 is gone so yeah 
Yeah, so these th things move on, so they're taking advantage of new tech, and it means the engineers have less work to do trying to support older operating systems. Is it a pain? Yes, it's a pain, because uh, I've updated just to Mojave. I would have actually updated to iSierra, which would have been supported, except that I forgot to actually download it at some stage, so I had no choice but to go to Mojave. So, folks, hopefully you found that useful. Um, thanks again to Laura Shu for letting me use that image. It's great. And I will probably do something myself. Um, I'm going to have a camera uh, to do it with or a phone to do it with soon. And I will probably do an update on the range mask video so that all of them are inside range mask so you can see them in one place instead of having to watch two different videos. Folks, if you liked it, of course, give it a thumbs up and pass it on to your friends. Let them know. Thanks for taking time to watch this, folks. I'll see you in the next video. Oh, yeah. Subscribe. All of that stuff. Yeah.